In the previous video, I had discussed about the classification of the glycerophospholipids. In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about the various members of this glycerophospholipids family. So, let us start with the first compound that is phosphatidylcholine. Phosphatidylcholine. The other name of this phosphatidylcholine is the lecithin. It is the lecithin. Now, if we first discuss about the structure of this phosphatidylcholine, there is one central glycerol molecule is there and generally we show this glycerol molecule by this vertical bar. Okay? So, this glycerol has three carbon, carbon number 1, carbon number 2 and carbon number 3. On the first carbon, the fatty acid group is bound by this ester linkage. On the second carbon, one more fatty acid is bound by the ester linkage. And on the third carbon, there is phosphate group is there and this phosphate is in turn bound with the choline. So, the structure of this lecithin or phosphatidylcholine, it is very, very simple. The fatty acid which is bound with the first carbon, most of the time it is a saturated fatty acid. It is a saturated fatty acid and most of the time it is 16 to 18 carbon long, 16 to 18 carbon long saturated fatty acid occupies this first position. The fatty acid which is bound with the second carbon, most of the time it is unsaturated, it is unsaturated fatty acid and most of the time it is 18 carbon to 20 carbon long, it is most of the time 18 to 20 carbon long, that means it is slightly longer than this saturated fatty acid. One more peculiarity about this phosphatidylcholine is that this phosphocholine, this is a polar group that means water soluble group is there, but it is not always present on this third carbon, sometime it is present on this second carbon. How it is present on the second carbon? Let us see. So, this is a this is a glycerol molecule that we generally show it by the vertical bar. So, on the first carbon on the C1, there is a fatty acid bound. Okay? So, sometime what happens? This polar phosphocholine group, it is found in the on the second carbon. So, on the second carbon, we have phosphate which in turn binds with the choline. And this third carbon, this third carbon, when this phosphocholine is bound with the second carbon, this third carbon once again it contains fatty acid. So, now you see that there are two fatty acid, one phosphate and one choline and one glycerol. The same all conditions gets fulfilled over here. So, this is also a lecithin. This is not anything else, but it is also known as lecithin. So, both compounds are lecithin. But here, there is a phosphocholine on the third carbon, whereas here in this lecithin, there is a phosphocholine on the second carbon. Now, this terminal, this third carbon, it is known as alpha carbon. So, such type of arrangement, we call it as alpha lecithin, whereas here this internal carbon, it is known as beta carbon. So, such type of arrangement, we identified by the name beta lecithin. So, remember there are two varieties of this lecithin can be there. One is alpha lecithin and another is beta lecithin. The second thing that we need to understand is that this lecithin is not a name of single compound. Why I am telling you this? Because if you look closely, see there is a fatty acid compound over here. Here it is not fixed that which fatty acid will be there. Okay, Which fatty acid will be there? It is not fixed. There are so many possibilities for the different fatty acid to occupy this position. It may be palmitic acid, it may be oleic acid, it may be elidic acid, it may be arachidonic acid. There are so many possibilities of the fatty acid. So, different fatty acids may occur in different lecithin. So, still all compounds are lecithin, but they might have a different phospholipid. So, uh, in particular species or in particular organ, this fatty acids are conserved, but what is their significance? why uh, what biological effect they have it is not yet fully understood okay so this lecithin it is the most important glycerophospholipid why because it is the most abundant it is the most abundant most abundant phospholipid most abundant phospholipid in animal tissue in animal tissue Okay? So, at everywhere this lecithin is present in very high concentration. 
the second molecule that we need to discuss the second molecule that we need to discuss is the phosphatidyl ethanolamine it is a phosphatidyl phosphatidyl ethanolamine now its structure is very much similar to the phosphatidyl choline and this the other name of this phosphatidyl ethanolamine is kefalin it is a kefalin now why it is given a name of kefalin because the kefal means head okay it means a head so when this phosphatidyl ethanolamine it was first isolated it was first isolated from the brain or nervous nervous tissue it was first isolated from brain so because of that it is given a name of kefalin now let's look at the structure of this phosphatidyl ethanolamine so it is very much similar to phosphatidyl choline so let's see so there is one central glycerol molecule there are three carbons c1 c2 and c3 the first carbon is bound with the fatty acid the second carbon is also bound with the fatty acid and the third carbon is bound with the phosphate and this phosphate in turn bound with the ethanolamine it is in turn bound with the ethanolamine now here once again this phosphoethanolamine is the polar group this phosphoethanolamine it is the polar group okay and it just like this phosphatidylcholine just like this phosphatidylcholine it may occur on this third carbon or second carbon so here also it this phosphoethanolamine may occur on the third carbon or second carbon so if it is present on this if it is present on this third carbon we call it as a alpha kefalin alpha kefalin and if this phosphokaline phosphoethanolamine if it is present on the c2 carbon or internal carbon of the glycerol we call it as a beta kefalin beta kefalin now everything else is similar to this phosphatidylcholine that the first fatty acid is most of the time it is un, uh, it is most of the time it is saturated fatty acid and 16 to 18 carbon long whereas this fatty acid bound with the second carbon most of the time it is unsaturated fatty acid with 18 to 20 carbon long okay and it is richly found in the brain but mostly mostly the cephalin the cephalin and lecithin this sorry kefalin and lecithin both occur together okay so whatever location at whatever location lecithin is found the same location kefalin is also found but one just one exception that it is particularly rich from the reach in the brain tissue the third compound the third member of this glycerophospholipid that we need to discuss is the phosphatidyl serine it is a phosphatidyl serine so once again the structure of phosphatidyl serine is very much similar to the phosphatidyl choline so central molecule is of the glycerol it is three carbon c1 c2 and c3 this first carbon is bound with the fatty acid the second carbon is bound with one more fatty acid and the third carbon phosphate group is there and this phosphate is in turn bound with the serine remember this serine is your amino acid this the peculiarity of this fatty acid of this first carbon and second carbon it is similar to the phosphatidylcholine that means this fatty acid it is mostly saturated fatty acid with 16 to 18 carbon whereas this fatty acid it is unsaturated fatty acid with 18 to 20 carbon the bond over here is the ester bond it is just like phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylethanolamine there is no any separate name given to this phosphatidylserine okay this phosphatidylserine its location it is mostly found in the brain and nervous tissue brain and nervous tissue that means neurons okay and one very important and one very unique feature of this phosphatidylserine is that that this is also present in it is also present in blood it is also present in blood see phosphatidyl choline and phosphatidyl ethanolamine are also present in blood but in very very less concentration whereas this phosphatidyl serine it is present in the blood in in somewhat significant amount so this is one unique and characteristic feature of the phosphatidyl serine so these are the sum of the members of the glycerophospholipids in the next video i will discuss about some more member of the glycerophospholipid 
If you have any query or confusion, please write it down in the comment section below. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.